Our first guest has been a part of TV comedy for decades. From the comedy company at Hey Hey It's Saturday to his own series, it's been a remarkable career for the man many know simply as Gilbo. Please welcome Russell Gilbert. <laughs> Russell, you told us yes. that there weren't necessarily that many photos because you weren't a photo-taking family, is that No, right? we weren't. Um, we never took photos, though. We never had cameras. We just weren't one of those families that had photos. And when you have a look at the photos, I don't know which ones you, you had a look at, but I, I gave you such a small amount because we were yeah. very limited on... Uh, yeah. You know, we didn't mind stealing a camera, but we... <laughs> <laughs> we never took photos. We just, you know, we just weren't a photo, photo sort of family. Too many kids. Fortunately, we did find a couple. Oh, and I think we're oh, starting yeah. with a beauty. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, this this photo I remember very well, and because uh, of the jumper, and it was a kinder, and and if you have a look, I wrote Russell on it, which is kind of stupid when you think, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know, so I wouldn't forget who it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, mum, uh, who's this one up again? Oh, it's me. Oh, right, I better. <laughs> But um, Mum knitted me that jumper for the, the last week at Kinder and on the Monday they took the photo and I still remember that day. I, I remember it really, really well because at the end of the week was the last day, uh, the last day of Kinder yeah. ever and they had a big party and, uh, and I couldn't go because um, I had chicken pox and it was like a fancy dress day and all the kids and so... And I, I was going to wear my new jumper and stuff like that. <laughs> but I couldn't go because I had chicken pox and... Um, which surprised me because we didn't even have chickens. <laughs> but, but, but what happened was Mum took me down. Mum took me down and there's clowns and there's balloons and then all the kids came to the fence within sort of some distance <laughs> and then they were poking fairy bread through the fence at this... <laughs> Guy with spots all over his face, like I was sort of the hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh. <laughs> Fairy bread, give me the. And they gave me balloons and a stick and a oh. whizzy thing and a whistle that went, whoosh, you know. And uh, but I do, I do remember that photo and I do remember that jumper very, wow. very well. It was a special, special jumper. You didn't keep the jumper. No, no, it doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the clan. Yeah, that's the Gilberts and uh, that's the, the whole six kids there and that's the only photo uh, we have of the whole six kids, right. to be quite honest. Um, there's Ricky, um, Raylene. Uh, Ricky and Raylene were twins, they were my older. And then, then there's Deborah, um, who passed away when I was 12. Uh, I was 11 and a half, she was 13. She got hit by a car. And then there's my other sister, Lynette. And... And Debbie, and and that's all really. It throws me a little bit because that's the only photo I, I have of my sister Debbie, and uh, with me in it, and I'm looking down like some goofball <laughs> at that stupid dog whose name was Duke. <laughs> and uh, we had so many dogs. Dad used to just he he bred dogs, and <laughs> until he, and he was kind of stupid until he worked out they could do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be funny. <laughs> what happened was we, we always, we always um, had hunting dogs. Like, my dad would go rabbiting, pig shooting, uh, he'd go ferreting. We had dogs for rabbits. We had quail dogs. And we had so many different dogs. But that, that photo I remember very well and, and it actually does bring a tear to my eye because that's the only photo I have of me and Debbie. And we were really close. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a sad time because I remember she used to go to a, my grandfather's and stay for the weekend. And I remember waving, waving goodbye in the car, and then, um, and then on the Sunday we made a phone call that Debbie's in hospital and she's okay. She's broken a hip, and she, she was with six of her girlfriends, and 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 they're all pushing bikes, and they just the car just hit Debbie. And then on the Wednesday, you know, I'm I'm a nearly eleven. I'm nearly eleven, I think. I'm just about to go into high school, and then then I come home from you know playing down the park and. Mum and Dad and the whole family sit around, and they're all crying, and they tell me you know, that Debbie's no longer with us, and just a really, really sad time. And, and you thought she was going to be all right. I, well, we all thought she was going to be all right, yeah. and um, it's just, that's just amazing as a kid to sort of sit there and watch the whole family crumble around you, and and go through life just to see, and you know, you see things on television nowadays, and you see people lose, and, and I understand how they feel, mm. and that to me. 
you know, I know I could do a joke about the dog and stuff like that, but I just, you know, I just still remember. And there was a friend of my brother-in-law's, Billy, who had a memory of, of his mate on his arm. And I remember when I'm old enough, the first thing I can do is I'm going to get in memory of Debbie tattooed on my arm. And it was, and I was like 11 years old, and mm. I ended up getting it, you know, and uh, getting a tattoo. Of, but, uh, but I didn't know what to think mm. as a young kid, you know. You, there was a sad time, and. Um, yeah. But anyway, about the dogs, you know, they were, they were fun. <laughs> well, thank you. Sorry for... Um, for sharing. No, no, no. It's uh, part, ah, of, part of life. That's... Grade. School photo. Now, what grade is it? I'm going to have a close look. It looks like grade 3A and 4A. So and what year? Class. What year? What year? It's in grade 4 yes. for four years. So. 60... <laughs> It was 1969. 1969. So, and that was that. That's me there, radio. I got thrown out of a class because I I used to be in another class that was just grade four. Yep. And what happened was I was I used to mess up and play around and and I used to throw things at myself like and and there was a lovely <laughs> lovely girl over the road who I still see and we're still friends Annette Perugia and she was Maltese and. Um, <laughs> And, and, and I used to get her in trouble all the time. So what I'd do is I'd stab myself with a compass and then I'd yell at and go, oh, you know, and it's done it again. And, <laughs> and then I'd throw rubbers at myself. I'd pinch my face and, and just used to get attention to get Annette in trouble. She lived over the road and we were still great friends. <laughs> but it seemed like a fun thing to do. And uh, I, went to the, I went to the trough too many times, I think, and with the same practical joke. And... <laughs> <laughs> they moved me into that class. And so school was happy. School was happy. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. you were happy being in that class. I was happy. Yeah. You played sport. Did you act? Did you I, sing? Uh, no, nah, I tried to get in the choir. That was a sad time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did, and that upset me because I really, really wanted to sing. Uh, but I still sung on my bike anyway, and annoyed the, <laughs> annoyed the crap out of the neighbours <laughs> for years. <laughs> All right, we're a little bit older here. We're a bit older. This is you and your mate. That's me tattoo, yeah. That's the bungalow go-go. That was my room. The what? We used to call it the bungalow go-go. Um, no, I get excited because I used to... We, I had an ultraviolet light and those were black felt ultraviolet posters. And, you know, we'd sit in there, we'd get a bit drunk and sometimes, you know, you'd get the wacky tobacco and you'd sort of... <laughs> And we'd sit there and we'd just turn off the, on the uh, ultraviolet light and pull faces at each other. <laughs> and we would think it was hilarious. And all my mates used to come out at the bungalow go-go, had a stereo with four big speakers. I had a waterbed in there and stuff. And, <laughs> but that, those times were fun times. That was, I remember that, that room was the first time I ever saw a really nice, firm pair of breasts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. It's just a shame that they were bellows. <laughs> We're at the abattoirs. We're at the abattoirs, and where do we start? Yes, I used to bone sheep. All right, OK. <laughs> I, I, I know that sounds worse than what it is, but that's... So, five years you were there? Oh, longer, longer. longer. I, left, I left school halfway through Form 3, which is year in... Year, year 9. Year 9 in the, in the new. Yep. So, and I started the meatworks the next day after I left school. So, my dad worked in the meatworks for 35 years. Mum worked in the meatworks for 20 years. I went there, I started when I was 14 and a half, nearly 15, and I worked in the meatworks till I was about 23. And so, I started out... Uh, peeling kidneys and um, <laughs> quite a, horrible. And then I learnt every job, and that's legging. So I didn't work in the boning room, I actually worked in the slaughter part, uh, uh, the abattoir part where they uh, dress the sheep. We, 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 they call it dressing the sheep, we actually really undress it, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to, we used to play practical jokes all the time, and, and now it's probably called bullying, but I got. <laughs> Practical jokes, right. and this part of the the leg here. What you do is, I can stand up. You'd have you you cut the leg off here, the knuckle, and then pull the skin back, and you'd throw this f hoof part just in a tray, just throw it in a tray, you know, and they make glue out of it or something. And uh, <laughs> but there'd be a young kid putting up the hooks, and I'd say to him, Hey, 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 Robbie, come here, come here. I said, Export trotters are coming through. He go, What? I go, Export trotters, which are the feet of the sheep. Yeah. And so as he's putting up the hooks, he go, What do you mean? So I give him a box of paper and a box, and I'd make him wrap a hundred of them. I'd say, You got to take. So he'd be doing his job and he'd be wrapping these export trotters. <laughs> you know, and then he'd sit there and he'd be looking and I'd be going, hey, hey, how many's in the box? He'd go, I, I think there's a hundred. I go, what do you mean you think there's a hundred? <laughs> Man, there's got to be a hundred in there. It's got to be a hundred. They're going overseas, these. So the little kid would count them again, try and do his own job. <laughs> then, then, then I'd 
I'd say to take them to Mr. Cheesley, Stan Cheesley, so he'd carry him. He'd carry him down to the to foreman's the office, and I'd hear him open the door and go, Hello, Mr. Cheesley, here's the export trotters, and I'd just hear Stan Cheesley go, You go back and tell Russell Gilbert! <laughs> And we had them doing lots of stuff, from brushing export heads' teeth to... Oh, you would not believe it. Oh, well, we've jumped ahead a little. Wow. Look at that haircut. <laughs> oh. Were you... Did you consider yourself a tough guy? Not really, no. no. Um, sometimes at school and stuff, you'd have fights with somebody, and then they go, oh, I want to fight you after school. <laughs> Sorry, I've got shit to do after school. I've got stuff I want to do after school, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I don't want to fight. <laughs> I've got to go and look for golf balls, I want to go and do other stuff. No, I've had a fight with you during, you know. But no, I didn't consider myself tough. But I, I, yeah. I just, I, I got picked on a little bit and then it was time you go, hey, if you don't fight, you lose. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you know, verbally you can get away with it. And if you can get away with it verbally, yeah. sometimes I copped a few and, you know, then I gave a few out. Yeah. <laughs> now, a big group photo. Yeah, this is all my mates uh, and a great bunch of boys and uh, still, see, still see quite a lot of them. There's Benno there. Uh, there's who else is it? Uh, Cogsy, Jimbo. I was about 20, maybe 21, and I fell through a glass window. I was at my mate Frog's party. <laughs> you and, fell? Well, I sort of got pushed, but um. <laughs> and, and what happened was um, we were at the party at Frog's place, and his older brother, me and him, were doing that stupid thing. It might have been, you know, you are milk, 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 lemonade around the corner, chocolates made. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever we were doing. He ended, I ended up just getting pushed and I fell through the glass window and I got a couple of cuts on my hand yeah. and a couple up my arm, but there was a gaping cut and I'll be honest with you, as I lifted up my arm, blood gushed oh. out of a major artery and they threw me in a car and it took them days to clean. They rushed me straight to Footscray Hospital. As soon as I got there, they reckon I, they reckon I was very close to... Because I'd lost so much blood, yeah. they, put, they put stuff in me. And then I woke up and I was strapped and then there was... Wow. I was in hospital for about three and a half weeks and... And you were all hooked up to things? Yeah, I, well, in the end, I used to get up a lot. So, in the end, what happened was... I'm a, as you can see, I'm sort of a hypo little bugger and... Uh, <laughs> I grabbed some money and I put it in my pyjama pocket and I walked out of the hospital with my steel bar. I, I went over to the news agent. I bought it, put that down like that, bought a Mad magazine, <laughs> packet of Chewies, a couple of other things, and I'm walking back. And where I was walking, I have to walk back through, there's a psych hospital. And so I'm walking back through the thing and this guy stops me and goes, come with me. And he took me back into the other hospital where people were a bit... <laughs> people were unwell. Yeah. And I'm not making fun of this. And I'm trying to tell him, and then he does all the checks, and he goes, yeah, you're all right, so then I can walk the way back to the normal hospital. <laughs> With the steel bar. With the steel attached. bar. He didn't care. Once I was out of his, you know, yes. hands, it was like, all right, on your way with your steel bar, you know. <laughs> OK. Second last shot, the Gilbert family. Yeah. Um, a little later on. A little later on, yeah. As you can see... Um, Most of the tops are off. Well, yeah. I, we were a poor family. We only had one T-shirt. <laughs> As you can see, I'm wearing it on that day. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's my dad there. That's my dad, Normie, and that's my mum, Esther. I don't have many of mum and dad together either. And I, I lost mum in um, 1996 when we were over in Florida. Mum uh, passed away and we were filming Hey, Hey, It's Saturday. And I could tell you the story because we were working together yeah. at the time and, and we were filming Hey, Hey, It's Disneyland. And um, I get a phone call, mum's unwell, and she had him seen before I left. And then family around the bed at the hospital where I was born and where I got my arm fixed, the Western General Foot Footscray Hospital. And, and mum, mum, was, mum was, you know, on her last legs. And uh, I got through and she managed to say to me, you know, I, I was filming, and she goes, don't come home, Russell. I go, mum, mum I love you, I'll be, I'll be home, I'll be on the first flight, I love you. And she says to me, don't come home, don't be silly. She goes, I know you love me, Russell, I know you love me. And, you know, it, it went, if I can, if I can say anything to anybody out there, if 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 you spend, if sometimes you say to your parents, you know, I'll be over and see you and stuff, don't don't waste any time with your parents now. Don't spend as much time yeah. because so many times I sit there, oh, we'll come over, I'll come over, and and I just remember that. And the, the last words she actually spoke were to me, and I came back home and I spent four days with the family, and then because oh, I was in the middle of the sketches, and then I went back and finished what I was doing because that's what Mum would have wanted me to do. Yeah. You think they're never going to go away, yeah. but they do. And, uh, and my dad passed away like four years ago. But that um, was, you know... Yeah. If but... I could uh, just uh, uh, alleviate the sadness too, it is the first appearance, I believe, of the rabbit ears in the shot. Where? The finger. Oh, yeah. 
Well, hence why that's my sister's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> There's a word I've never used before, hence, I think. <laughs> Last shot, and it feels appropriate. Uh, Russell Gilbert doing stand up. That was a show I did with Glenn Robbins and Trevor Marmalade. We toured it, and it was called Bizarre Laugh Triangle. Yeah. And I remember, I remember that night. Um, I remember that night, and I remember that jacket very well. That's. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you why I remember that night because it was at the Dick Whittington Hotel, and it was Christmas. And we did the Christmas season, and that's why those balloons are up there, and that's how much money they went. They went crazy, didn't they? <laughs> Three balloons. God, enjoy yourself, boys. <laughs> but uh, that, was, that, was, that was really early on in my career. Well, I, I could have been behind that curtain wearing a beret. You could have been. <laughs> I used to do the dickwit. You yeah. did do the dickwit, and we both... Look, I can be honest, we both started nearly exactly yeah. the same time because we did our first gigs yeah. on Hey Hey at Saturday in 85. That's and I, right. think, I think you did your first yeah. in 85. Yeah. I did my first in 85, and I remember watching uh, Brian, a la Raymond J. Yeah. Bartholomew, strutting your stuff and just wowing them every night. Yeah. And it's uh, great to see that well, we're still sitting well, opposite each other now. how beautiful we're together. God love you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Gilbert.